Hello, welcome to day three of Vlogmas 2019. Today I'm at the ranch because it is beautiful out and I realized that there may not be very many beautiful days in December and that this is probably a good day to introduce you or reintroduce you to my herd and um, show you some of the new faces I was talking about. Hello girls! Hi, hi! Look at the pretty faces. Okay, so here we are in my girls' barn. And for those of you who don't know, this is my main barn. Let me uh, step out here, show you a bit. This is what I call my dry lot. It's just sometimes muddy, but it's dirt. They roll in it and all that stuff. Okay. I don't want to go all the way back and have to walk all the way back. <laughs> okay, so here's the lean-to on, um, this is the south side of the barn. My barn is 60 by 30 feet inside, and most of it, I would, um, I, maybe about 60% of the space inside is for the alpacas. I have three pens in there that I can isolate animals. Um, the other 40% inside is storage. I have, uh, well, a lot of supplies and stuff in there. It's where I keep some of their hay and that kind of thing. And the way I use this lean-to, for one, alpacas love lean-tos. If you are building any structure for them, please consider putting a lean-to on there. They will spend more time under your lean-to than inside the barn. They love it, love it, love it, love it, love it in all kinds of weather. Um, and one of the things that I like to use it for is sticking their hay underneath of it because they spend all their time there. The hay is protected from the rain and the snow and the yada yada. Um, and there's six sections across here. And so you can see I like using this one for a bale and this one for a bale. And, and um, I just flip flop, you know, which one. When that one's low, then I'll put it back on this side. But here in the middle is where they like to to have their poop pile. So I try to keep the bales um, out of those two sections. Uh, on this side, that far section, I've used for various things. I've made a creep feeder out of it, um, but it, it's typically empty. For a time there, I parked my gator up in there, um, so it was out of the weather mostly. But these days, it's just, it's a nothing. It's a place for them to cush and hang out. Now on this other side, that last section, I use as a separate um, section or like pen for those that need some special attention. I do have some animals in that now. Um, and we will get to that. Here's my gator. It's actually a five-wheeled gator. There's four wheels in the back and one in the front. It's a very early model of a John Deere Gator. And um, yeah, it, <laughs> those have been around, I think it's from the 80s, maybe 90s. I forget what year it is. It's been around a long time. Um, and it's been sitting there a long time. So when I got it, for the most part, I would attach that little dump cart to the back of it um, and clean up the poop piles and haul it on down to the bottom of the pasture, way down in the valley there. And now, we are relocating everything to those piles right there. So this is becoming my new, uh, I guess, beans. That's what we call the, the alpaca poop is beans because it's actually in bean form. And um, so we're making piles out there and they're decomposing out there. Um, for the, those of you who follow my Facebook page, earlier this year I posted um, a picture of zucchini that was planted as an experiment to see how well alpaca compost really works because I've heard that it's like this miraculous I'm not allowed to call it fertilizer um, soil additive shall we say and like it's like the best stuff you could possibly use in your garden and in your soil so um, yeah that's a whole different topic to get into that okay here's a poop pile I'll show you beans for those of you not familiar see and um, alpacas and llamas, they are, they use community poop piles, and this is just one of them. That's one of the nice things about these animals is they keep things, you know, as 
clean as can be when it comes to livestock. Okay, so let's get into some faces here. Let's look at one. She's over here in a very comfortable position, chowing down on the older bale. This is one of my new girls. This is Libby. Hello, Libby. Hi. Liberty. That Libby is short for Liberty. She's so pretty. She's a cutie. So to talk about um, some of the new animals that I got, especially this year, there were three new groups that I got. Two of them came from retiring or semi-retiring farms. Libby here came in a group of 10 um, from a place, uh, from a couple that had fully retired from alpacas. And um, they're here in the state. They knew about my place. I've known them for a number of years. And they wanted uh, a nice place for their animals to go to. And they knew that this would be a good home. So they gifted me the 10 alpacas. That's five girls and five boys. And Libby is one of them. Okay, we're going to start here. All right. Back here is Onyx. She was one of my first, first alpacas um, from seven years ago. I've had her that long. She's been a part of my herd seven years. She also came from a semi-retirement situation. And then this is Blessing, also from the group of ten. They're all just so beautiful. Look at her. Hi, Blessing. <laughs> Okay, this white one here is Breezy, also from the group of 10. You know, you take a look at her ears. She has like fringe on her ears. Look at that. Hi. Hello, Miss Breezy. Okay, and then in the front here is Taxi, also part of the 10. Interesting how we're... We're getting a lot of them right off the bat. She also has the ear fringe. With the sunlight, you could see that. Okay, behind her is Kiona, who is one of my very ornery alpacas. I've had, when did I get her? I got her when I was at the old place. I probably have I've had her for about four years. And I noticed that her and Taxi have some drainage out of their eye um, their eyes look good but there's some drainage on their cheek so I would say that's weather related the cold that we've been having at night okay behind her we have a silver gray rose rose she's like um, I'm eating okay behind her we have the black one with the white on her face hi that's Lindsay hello Lindsay so Rose came with Kiona. I've had her for about four years. Lindsay came in the same group as Onyx, so I've had her for seven years. This girl looking at us is Toy Dancer. She was one of my very first Surreys. Um, I got her seven years ago. She came before... Um, Onyx and Lindsay. Um, she was actually in the very first, first group that arrived in Nebraska for me. And she wears a coat. I need to take that off today because it's warmer. It had been very cold. She's one of my animals that tends to shiver. She's older. Um, her fiber doesn't grow as quickly anymore. I'm, I'm guessing she's about 17 now. If I were to look at her record, I'd know for sure. But somewhere around 17 years. They live on average about 20 years. So she's, she's one of my elders. All right, we'll get to her. Oh. <laughs> this Surrey here is Fanny. She also came with the same group as Toy Dancer. Beautiful Surrey. And Fanny, I don't know if I can get it uh, close enough, but her eyelashes, I love her eyelashes. She's just so pretty. All right, this one that was walking away from me, this is Sharla. Charla came with Onyx and Lindsay. <laughs> uh, if you follow my Instagram and Facebook, she was featured in a picture a couple weeks ago. I took her to the vet to get checked out. Um, everything is fine. All is good. This girl here is Cat Sarah. 
Um, I've also had her for seven years. She came with Onyx and Sharla. So pretty. She's one of the really pretty ones. Although, she doesn't have a nice personality, if I could put it that way. She's not as kind and sweet as some of the other ones. No. She's very particular about what she does and how she wants to be handled. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Okay, here is Ella. I love the name Ella, and she is a sweetheart. She's more in the small frame, but she's Taxi's daughter. Actually, Breezy's Taxi's daughter, too. Um, she has that ear fringe. She's so pretty and cute and sweet. Like, yep, I want a baby from you, girl. You're a cutie. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that tells you she came with the group uh, of ten. One of the five of the ten. So she came with Taxi and Blessing and Breezy and all them. And over here, we have Jewel. Hello, Miss Jewel. She is a Surrey alpaca and the very first to be born at my place. She was born at the old place. Um, hi, baby. Yes. Her mom, her mom. Her mom was Sunday. If you've watched my other videos, Sunday was her mom. We lost Sunday last winter. Um, so Jewel is six. She's got to be about six. Yeah, because I would have bred her mom the very first spring that I had them all, and she would have been born six years ago. Um, spring, summer ish. Okay, hey, let's get to these guys right here. These are boys. And they're in this separate area here. Let me introduce you to them first and then I'll tell you why they're in here. This black one is Andres. The white one behind him, staring right at us, is Triton. These are two that came with the group of 10. Oh, I know. Andres, he has complained since he got here. <laughs> He's complaining especially because he's in more of an enclosed space and not in the big pasture that the boys get. Um, okay, the white one behind them is Ever Ready. He was part of the group that came with Onyx and Sharla and, and that group. So I've had him for seven years. And these three guys have been victim of meningeal worm, which is basically the one thing you have to be concerned about with alpacas in terms of disease or uh, you know something that can make them sick yes they can get parasites that will suck their nutrition and that kind of thing and you got to be careful um, with that but meningeal worm is it is a parasite but it attacks their nervous system and it affects uh, the way that their legs fun function so they have trouble walking, have trouble getting up and down, and eventually that, that worm makes its way to the brain and ultimately kills them. So I started seeing signs of this in my herd uh, maybe two months ago um, in the big boy group, which is where these guys were. And I ended up treating five, mm, five boys and Sharla. For some reason, Charlo was showing those signs too. Got everyone treated, which is a five-day treatment. Um, these boys in particular, um, once they go through the treatment, it, it kills the worm so it doesn't do any more damage. But there's still the damage that was already done in their nervous system. And these guys... Um, I did not feel their back legs were working well enough to put them back into the big group of boys who rough play and horse around and I thought they need more time to have their legs recover before I put them back in that environment. So they've been in here maybe a month. Um, not quite sure, but maybe a month. And they came one by one as I, I saw each of them have signs of M-worm. Um, and treated them. When I treated them, I put them in individual stalls so I could catch them every day and give them medicine because it's oral medicine and that's some work to get them to take medicine that way, as well as a few shots. But the five day treatment is an oral med and a lot of it. So then I put them all together here 
And even though all three boys are intact, um, because of the uh, compromise in their back legs, they cannot get to the girls. And they've actually shown no interest. I think they know that they can't um, actually accomplish anything. Um, and they're not, they're still not feeling their best. I see Triton back there. He's just staring off into space and it is not what he was like when he first got here. So I know he's not feeling well and I'm giving them supplements and trying to help him out to feel better. But that's why they're in here. They get a space in the barn through there. I can show you that another time, but their water's in there and they, they have maybe about 500 square feet altogether to move around in. Um, and then what I want to do is this space right here, like from where I'm standing over to the trees, um, and you may be able to see back in there, the first, well, that gate's kind of in the way, um, the first line of fence posts. Um, this area was, my original intention was to make it into a nursery. So where the guys are now, I put moms before they give birth, like the last month when they need extra nutrition. And then after the babies are born, put them in like a secure area where I can continue giving moms extra nutrition. And then I have um, posts out there to build out a pasture just for them as well to separate them from the big group and just give them extra attention. Um, let's see, that goes all the way over. You can see the fence right there. So my plan is this, which is what I was calling the dry lot of the nursery, is mostly fenced in because I had started that project. But there's a few areas to finish off, including this right in here to close it up. And then I'm gonna give this area to the guys for the winter. I'm thinking they're gonna need the winter to recover in order to not be harmed going into or back with the, the big boys. All right, I need to go out into the pasture because there's a few more alpacas out here. Let's go. Okay, these three, I think I got the third one in the frame, do I? Yeah, they're all three there. Sorry, the sun's shining, I can't see quite right. All right, so these three are among the last group that I got and I actually purchased them from someone um, who I got connected to about a year and a half ago. She had just gotten alpacas from someone who was retiring from alpacas. And um, she was very interested in alpacas and was excited to finally get them. And I sheared her herd initially. And then some life stuff happened and she really wasn't able to care for them the way that they should. So I bought the remainder of her animals, um, which was four. Over here is Sasha with baby Alex. Alex was born in July. Let's see if I can get closer to him. And then over here is Lexi. She is also the daughter of Sasha. Um, I don't know if Lexi and Alex have the same dad, but you can see that they were not shorn this year. That was one of the things that didn't get happened, or didn't happen. And my heart just really goes out to alpacas that need help. And I felt like this was a group that needed help. So I got them. But they came with a male, a light silver gray male. I love silver gray or gray alpacas. And so I bought them mostly for him. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'll take the rest because these girls and Alex need a good home. Um, and I can make use of all kinds of fiber. So I took them all. Let's see if Alex will let me get close to him. Oh, he's trying to nurse. I did trim up Sasha's top knot because she had some growing in front of her eyes and she couldn't see very well. She would tilt her head up trying to see underneath. It's like, oh, mama, you need to see better. So I trimmed that up, but they're not gonna get shorn until the spring with everybody else. And believe it or not, Alex has grown a lot since he got here. I think I've had them for about two months, maybe three, I, I don't remember. But look at the cuteness, he's so cute. If you've seen photos on Facebook and Instagram, he's been in some of those photos and videos that I've taken. 
All right, and then the final two in the girl group are llamas. I have new llamas. Um, some of you may remember Bridget. I lost her last summer. I have a number of her boys here, which we'll see when I go to the other barn. Let's see if I can get close. So down there is Molly. She's all brown, very tall. Her stature is a lot like Bridget, just a very tall, big girl. She may join us up here. And then over here, walking away from us, is Jessica. I got Jessica and Molly together along with one other boy that I'll introduce you to. I went to Wyoming to get them. Yes, so Jessica is pretty big too. She's not as big as Molly. Hi, Molly. It's interesting because these are animals, you know, the situation was you don't know their history. The lady I got them from, she acquired them from, uh, oh, there's two different, two different graves. I'm trying to remember what the story was. Um, but she felt like it was a bad situation that they were in, so um, she helped them out. I don't know if she would call it a rescue, but something like that. A woman who shares a heart like mine that um, you'll pay almost any price to help out an animal that you see is in need. Okay, so we're all, I want to get good footage of these llamas for you. Turn the camera on her and she walks away. <laughs> llama or llama. Molly and Jessica are very cautious of me still. I've warmed them up with some treats and some pellet food and um, they're warming up. And they're also showing signs of being more bonded to the herd. That was an issue early on. <laughs> When they first got here, you know, they came together, so they were bonded to one another, but they weren't bonded to anybody else. And I need them to be bonded to everyone, or at least most of them, so that they are willing to protect them. And that has developed, you know, that just comes in time. If I only got, if I only had brought one, then she would have attached to them a lot sooner, obviously. But already having one another, it's taken a bit longer. But now I see them spending more time in places where they're watching and guarding. And for example, this group of three was out there. Those two were with them in a place where they could watch them versus everybody over here at the barn. You can see the size difference there between Sasha and Molly. Molly's a big girl. Sasha's pretty average for a female alpaca. Lexi's like, what you doing? What you gonna do? You're okay, honey. Okay, so this is the part where I gotta count everybody and make sure everyone's here. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Should have two more. Eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen is the number for this girl group including little Alex. Oh, maybe now we can get some close-ups. He's like, this is not my mama. Not my mama. Good aunties, though. Yes, good aunties. Hey, 
here Andre's still complaining. I keep telling him not to stress out. Don't work himself up so much. It's not necessary. Some arguing over food. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, so obviously food is good. We got two big bales here that they're munching on. My chores here are to get the coat off of Toy Dancer and to refill their waters. Before I head on over to the boys' barn, I just want to take another look here. I love to watch them eat. I love the way they, they bury their face in the bale. So, so cute. And then we have Toy Dancer down here. Just taking a little rest. Yes, yeah, she knows. She heard her name. She's a sweetheart. So good. You can see I got her coat off. And then we got uh, Libby digging her face down there again. Okay, but here's the thing. This is what I love to do. I just watch them. They're like, yeah, what's up? What's up? Breezy looking at me. What's up? You should have. Oh, where'd Jessica go? Oh, she's right there. Molly, hey, Molly, you don't need to do that, there's plenty for everybody, do you see these big bales, you're okay, <laughs> look at that face, Can you, I know it's getting dark, can you see that face, <laughs> ah, still picking on her, Lexi, she handles it well, though. Yeah. Look at these two. There's a photo right there. Okay, let's head to the boys because it's starting to get dark. I'm at the boys' bar now, and I just tallied up the, the time of all the videos. And if I showed you everyone today, it would be over 40 minutes. I know I talk a lot, I share a lot, and a lot of you enjoy that part, which is why I do it. Um, but Well, that and I just love sharing things that I love. <laughs> um, so what I've decided to do is show you the boys tomorrow instead. That way uh, you get two days full of lovely alpacas, and maybe I can get a day ahead in recording and get the videos out earlier in the day for you to see. Ah, we'll kind of see how it goes. So this will be the end of day three, and I will see you tomorrow and show you the boys.